In this video, Scribe will be talking about capital markets research. For accountants, an important question is whether there's a relationship between the accounting reports that we provide to external users and the amount that they're willing to pay for the firm, or in other words, the share price. From the field of finance, we have a theory about capital markets and the determinants of share price. The theory that's been most influential in finance is the efficient market hypothesis. It's worth remembering, however, that the efficient market hypothesis relies on a few assumptions. In the efficient market hypothesis, we assume that individuals are rational and wealth maximizing. The assumptions can be useful in predicting how the market as a whole will behave. Rational investors will determine the price that they're willing to pay based on their estimates of the net present value of all future cash flows of the firm. The estimation of future cash flows will be based on all available information about the firm. Accounting information is part of that information. Most important are profits which are often referred to as earnings. Earnings now help predict earnings in the future. Earnings, or in other words profits, can either be used to pay dividends, a cash flow for the shareholder, or they can be retained in the firm, which should increase future cash flows. So based on the theoretical framework that we've developed, we can make some predictions, and we call them hypotheses, about the effect of releasing accounting reports that give investors a basis for estimated future earnings. Our research design that we can employ to test this hypothesis is an event study. The event we're interested in is in the release of accounting information. If the release has any information content, we would expect the market to react immediately and completely to what they learn from the accounting report. This new information is referred to as unexpected earnings. But the empirical results tell us that, although there is some reaction to the release of accounting information, much of the result has been anticipated or preempted because there is other information that the market uses to anticipate the earnings result. Furthermore, the market doesn't react immediately or completely to the accounting information, and this is called post-announcement drift. Another research designed to test the relationship between accounting earnings and share price is an association study. Over a longer period of time, does the share price change in response to changes in reported earnings? If accounting reports provide information, Increases in reported profits should lead to increases in share price, and vice versa. This is observed by looking for an association between share price and reported profits. A very interesting result of this research is that prices lead earnings. Share prices change first, and reported earnings move in the same direction, but later. Again, this challenges our theories about the information that's conveyed by accounting reports. This might lead us to wonder whether we, as accountants, are measuring the right things that actually do lead to increased value in the organization. Or in other words, we might question the relevance of what we measure. But even if we are measuring the right things, if we don't do so faithfully, the market will not believe and therefore will not react to the accounting information. This is the faithful representation issue. So, a breakdown of either relevance or faithful representation will reduce the association between accounting earnings and share price. So now we'll come back to where we started. How well does standard finance theory, based on assumptions of efficient markets and rational, wealth-maximizing market participants, predict share prices? Various anomalies indicate that the market is often influenced by things that should have nothing to do with the net present value of all future cash flows. Alternative plausible explanations, or in other words theories, can be found in psychology and are referred to as behavioral finance, which we'll be looking at in more detail later in the course.